Hey, what's up everyone? Paul from Grindhouse Funhouse and I just watched Lovely But Deadly on Tubi, a 1981 high school set action comedy starring Lucinda Dooling as Marianne Lovely Lovett, playing a cheerleader whose brother drowns in the ocean while high, only to discover that so many more students at her high school are also drug fiends. So she decides to take on the drug pushers at her school, trying to figure out who's the uh, kingpin supplying all those sweet, sweet drugs while using her martial arts skills to take down the whole operation. This movie is ridiculous in all the right ways, but also cringy in a lot of places. Uh, this is an early 80s Reagan era anti-drug movie, a PSA that has an uh, ABC after school special feel to it. Why don't you crack down on that darn drug situation? Although we do see a few boobies, so I guess that makes it a little less so. What starts it all off is a high school kid, and I'm putting air quote between kid. Uh, we see on a beach hanging out with his friends, tripping balls, and uh, wanting to catch a tuna in the ocean, and sadly drowns. You're a real pain in the neck, you know that? I'm gonna catch a tuna. That kid happens to be the brother of our protagonist, and right away Mary Ann Lovely Lovett starts asking questions, gets close to one of the drug pushers at the school dance, uh, Captain Magic, as he likes to call himself. Would you like to go on a tour with Captain Magic? If you can provide the ticket. Uh, gets the information she needs, beats the shit out of him, and gives him a taste of his own medicine. I used to rub the throat of an old possum, just like this, so he would take his medicine. The people behind the drug ring are getting nervous, so they sent out right in the middle of a school day what I imagine to be students in their fencing gear trying to get her, but uh, she swiftly kicked their asses. There's a fat lazy cop on the case that could give two shits about the whole thing. He'd rather be eating donuts and play some weird video game at his work desk. Everyone is letting Mary Ann down, so she has to do everything on her own, vigilante style, sometimes with the help of uh, the lady dojo she's part of, where everyone awkwardly kung fus and looks straight at the camera while wearing zebra print kimonos. It's when she gets close to the quarterback of the football team, who's the uh, king dipshit of the drug pushers at the school, that she finally starts getting answers. That's also when we get to meet the creepy old man behind the scenes, uh, Mel Novak, and his awesome hair helmet, and my favorite, Mr. Good Martin, played by George Costanza's inept New York Yankees executive. You're a terrible liar, George. Look at you, you're a wreck. You're sweating bullets. It's the Kung Pao. Mm. George likes his chicken spicy. Who was supervised him on the job, Richard Hurd. So weird seeing him creeping on teenage girls. Unless you really love me. <laughs> Sorry, Mary. I guess I went too far, huh? I can't help it if you didn't get any in high school. I still haven't mentioned the rich kid that's only a year out of high school trying to be uh, a teen idol through his music. We even get two full songs being performed by him. Clearly the, uh, the producers trying to stretch out the movie's runtime with this nonsense, which feels awkwardly out of place, but still has a, a purpose for him to be around, being that uh, he's uh, Mary Ann's boyfriend and the big reveal we get towards the end of the movie that is just another ridiculous thing amongst many others. Like I said before, we get a lot of awkward fight scenes. There's the locker scene brawl with some women on women action that's just bananas. <laughs> or when Mary Ann is invited to a, uh, a costume party at the drug kingpin's house and uh, picks a fight with a jealous girl from the cheerleading squad that turns silly real fast. Scenes that goes on and on, no cuts, no edits, where there should be cuts. Uh, watching grown adults laughing it up like it's the funniest shit ever. All right, so after all that, to be or not to be? I'd say to be. The fact that everyone in the movie playing high school students are in their mid-twenties or this guy who's the quarterback slacky he looked like he's lived past his mid-thirties is definitely strange. But I gotta say Lucinda Dooling who plays Marianne Lovely Lovett is likable and very much watchable. She's got questionable martial arts skills but uh, that adds to her charm. All the villains in the movie are cringy assholes but they all get theirs in the end so that's satisfying. Uh, there's even one where I've never seen that kind of on-screen death before, where they knock him unconscious, put him in a life-size cardboard box, carry him down to the high school basement, and steam him to death.
I mean, that's pretty damn creative. The last 20 minutes of the movie turns into a ridiculous never-ending foot chase that turns into a boat chase. Everyone that's after Marianne is a terrible shot. But uh, there's a reveal yet when the end credit rolls that had me laughing out loud pretty hard. So it's funny, uh, be it unintentionally a lot of the times. But um, yeah, man, check it out. Which, by the way, Lovely But Deadly never got a physical release beyond VHS. So Tubi and YouTube are the only place to check it out. So that was my review for Lovely But Deadly. Go visit all my socials at Grand House Funhouse. More reviews of free movies to watch on Tubi and Plex coming up soon. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I'll say to you, ciao bye for now. Specialize in junior highs.